I'm Sherelle, and my co-host is, um, I almost said, <laughs> Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I almost called you the other name. And Hi, Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> Hi, Sherelle. Oh Hi, Hi. So Andrew came to me. He's absolutely fascinated with the Real Housewives of D.C., more specifically you. What happened to D.C., and why did you guys get canceled? Well, I think, Sherelle, there's a... Um, myriad of reasons why we did can get canceled but primarily um when you have a couple that um makes a decision to arrive at the white house staging um an invitation that they're supposed to be there and they're not um it causes a major international incident and so i think that within our ranks as far as production and bravo and um and all of the, the legal teams that were behind the whole incident that occurred, I think that it was just impossible for us to go forward. And, you know, we really couldn't go forward without the Salahis and we really couldn't go forward with them mm. because they created such a crazy that you couldn't, you couldn't replace that, especially in DC where everyone is pretty well behaved and respectful of others. Um, so I think that it just, I think it was just a, a prudent decision on behalf of, of the executive producers of Bravo, including Andy, to just kind of lay it down and let it go because of, of the risk. I'm curious, yeah. did the Salahis ever cop to what they did and apologize? No, they never have admitted that what they did was wrong or that they were uninvited. They they stood on their they stood on their platform that they were invited. In fact, that was the whole incident that happened on the View, um, because in our press tour, that was the main question, um, uh, elephant in the room, if if you will. Uh, were you invited? And they stand <laughs> to this day. They're not together anymore, but the two of them still say that they were invited and they showed up. Um, legitimately crazy. Go yeah. ahead, Andrew. Did you have a question? When I, I have something to add to that. So when my parents, they were doing something and it was with a uh, congressman. I don't know if you're familiar with Joel, Joel Broyhill. Sure. Uh, pa Broyhill. Yeah. And um, they were hosting an event at their house and um, the Salahis crashed that event too. <laughs> really? Yeah, Doesn't shock me. And Susie was hosting this event, and this is a, a this was a congressman person in Congress. Like this is, and if you've ever been to the Boar Hill home, I mean, it's I have beautiful. I know it's Susie. Beautiful. I know Susie. Yeah. 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 And yeah, they crashed this event. I mean, and when you saw this, and we're all just sitting here, and we're all just like, <laughs> my mom told me this afterwards, and she's like, these idiots. Like, and my mother <laughs> never, ever, ever used that word. The Boar Hills. Mm -hmm. I mean. Unfortunately, they're no longer with us, but I mean. I know, I know, so sad. Yeah. Um, and what a firecracker that Susie was. I mean, she, she, she was a piece of work. Um, I grew up going to Washington Golf right there next door to where oh, they wow. lived. Wow. Yeah, and my father was friends with, with Congressman Broyhill for years and years. So yeah. we grew up around them over there in Arlington, Virginia. But yeah, oh. I, I doesn't, doesn't shock me at all, Andrew. And um, that's one of many, 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 many times they did that. That was wow. just basically their, their, their modus operandi was to just show up in places that were um, exclusive and a lot of times politically driven um, because they had an agenda. And um, Which was? What was the agenda? Social climb. Uh, just, just a social climb. And, and uh, make the appearance that they were people that mattered and were very important um, in the social scene. And, you know, they, they developed such an incredible reputation of con that when we found out, when we were all cast and we found out that the Salahis were going to be on the show as kind of like the main crazy we warned both, both Linda, both Linda and I, because Linda knew much better than I did um, the yeah. risk involved with with putting them with us. And we all 
you know, we all just like crossed our fingers and our toes and prayed that nothing really bad would happen. Um, and it would be more fun and entertaining and silly than it would be so serious and implicating to our national security. I mean, exactly. Yeah. I they mean, shook hands with the president in the White House with crazy. no invitation and no clearance. Crazy. And they didn't yeah. acknowledge the repercussions of either. That, that happened. But thank God it was them and thank God it wasn't some terrorist or a, another person that would have mm -hmm. caused major mm -hmm. harm and destruction to that, to that evening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it was just their little game that they, that they continued to play. And this was like the top stakes and they got it caught on camera on our show. Exactly. I'm kind of confused kudos because to Andrew's- Kudos to them. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of confused because anyway. Andrew's really familiar with the situation. Why punish the entire cast for something that one couple did? I know. I think what happened, though, Sherelle, to be honest, is, you know, we were a first season in the first season of, of a reality show, especially Real Housewives. Um, yeah. And this is 10 years ago also, before things really have become so blown up and all about the money behind it. The budget is very small and, you know, it's, it's basically a trial to see if this will will take off and create revenue for the network. Yeah. And so I think that um, what happened is they ended up spending so much money defending themselves legally oh. behind this incident mm -hmm. that I think that it just, it became, and also there was another factor going on that, that not many people realized. Um, Comcast was acquiring NBC Universal at the time. Yeah. So this was in the middle of a big financial merger transition and Comcast is quite a conservative group of people and NBC Universal had, you know, they, they were, they were trying to work themselves out. And I think with this incident, it, it, it was one of those that was just like, cut your losses. This isn't worth it. You know, we can't, we're not, we're not going to be able to replace these people because they, they don't exist, especially in Washington. Um, and you know, and I think also our show is a little bit of a, of a test case. I think that, that the network was getting a lot of negative feedback from fans about women mistreating each other and, mm -hmm. um, and the drama that was ensuing that was kind of getting unpalatable. And so I think they, they wanted something that seemed a little bit more polished and, um, and, and Obama had just taken office. So there was all kinds of interest on what that looked like in Washington. And so I think that that just, you know, kind of set the table for some interest in, in getting it in getting it picked up. Mm -hmm. But exactly. it, you know, and frankly, when I was cast, um, I said to my father, who is a lawyer and um, in the entertainment business, he was one of the yeah. pioneers of the cable business. Um, so I went to him and said I had this opportunity and he looked at me like I had four heads, first of all. <laughs> and I thought it was a like crazy, crazy idea to put my family out there at risk. And, um, and I said, you know, Dad, I really have a gut about this. I have a charity that I want to showcase and grow. Mm -hmm. um, no one gets this opportunity that I, that I know of. And um, there's a huge platform that I can create. Mm -hmm. And I go, also... I don't think reality shows work in DC. So I think this is kind of a one-off opportunity. <laughs> yeah. And so I really, I mean, I, I jumped in a hundred percent, but I also had this kind of gut feeling that it wasn't going to be anything that would last and last seasons and seasons. Cause I just didn't yeah. see, I didn't see the legs. I didn't see the legs on it. Andrew, did you, you have a question? That? Yes, I did, because you guys were gypped out of the entire housewife experience. Like, I was thinking, and we were watching the show, yeah. that I could have sent you guys down for the Green Bri to the Greenbrier Resort for, like, a couple days. It's literally not that far. You've got the element of history. No, you guys got yeah. no house trip. You had to, you took the show at a loss. I know that. Yep. Um, you did. Your reunion, sure. your reunion is gypped. Like, that's very hard to find. I'm one of eight people who have actually, who I actually own the reunion, and I'm... <laughs> I own the entire season that you guys like. Uh, 
and <laughs> you've got you the only reruns you guys have had was this on Memorial Day weekend. You guys, I feel bad. <laughs> oh my God. Do you think that they ever like thought about bringing you guys back? You know, we have such an incredible loyal fan base to this day, and it's been 10 years. Um, and I, I, it's, it's mind blowing to me that Andy hasn't done something just, you know, just to honor the, the legacy of us. And, and if you, yeah. if you talk to the people that liked it or didn't like it, it was kind of epic. What happened was kind of epic in our, in our case. And so, you know, to be not invited to the BravoCon yeah. conferences. You weren't invited? Never, yeah. never included. It's as though we didn't exist. Well, so, um, so is it apparent yeah. that Potomac was your replacement? Is that what they were doing with Potomac? Um, no, I don't, I don't think it was our replacement. I think it was just a, a, a new eye, a new version of DC yeah. that wasn't exactly. politically driven. I think our, <laughs> sorry, you guys, my thing is. Oh, no. oh, I was wondering uh, what that was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to shut this off. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I think that, um, that Potomac is a whole different approach and, um, a whole different, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're more Maryland oriented. Um, but you know, DC is a me metropolitan city. It's yeah. Maryland, DC and Virginia, and we're all within a mile of one another, <laughs> like yeah. literally you can throw a stone across the Potomac River and you're in Maryland and Virginia or DC. You have pop, um, like, yeah. I mean, yeah, and it's, and it's it's quite, do I feel bitter? Yeah, are you upset about getting a cheap? No, I just feel, I, I don't feel bitter. I feel disappointment. I feel yeah. like we were just kind of tossed aside in a way that was a little bit disrespectful. And, you know, the four of us gave ourselves a hundred percent and really had a ball together. Mm -hmm. We got to know each other. Linda is my friend of 15 years prior to the show. And, um, you know, we, we just made a pact that we would stick together no matter what we'd, we'd bring the drama and we'd, we'd show our true selves and, and react in, in a, an authentic way. But, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I have no regrets. I just wish that Bravo would have given us a little better send off. That's do you all. watch any of the other franchise? I do occasionally. Um, I have, uh, I don't watch much TV to be honest. I, li I like to marathon certain shows that interest me. Um, but I do, I do catch them sometimes and I'm, you know, I'm watching I'm, I watched my friends in Dallas because I lived in Dallas for two and a half years. And um, there was a big push for me to, to maybe participate in their show. And I, I just decided that I wasn't from Dallas. I'm not part of the Dallas scene. And it, it, wouldn't, it probably wouldn't have done much for them or for me to, to participate. It just would have been sort of a fun fact that I was there. Well, since you already watched, you pretty much know like if you watch Beverly Hills and you can jump in on this too, Andrew, it feels like they already come into the season with their own pre-plan uh, storylines. Did you guys do that? Well, producers do plan out what your storylines are going to be. And then what they do is it's their job and the editor's job to weave those storylines together to make it seem like you guys are buddies 24 seven and all of your lives are all entwined, which isn't reality. That's the biggest farce of it all is that, you know, when we're not filming, you know, we're not, we're not that connected as you see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, they do set you up for, for storylines. And in my case, um, being that it was a first season and we all were so green and naive to the process yeah. with very little instruction or coaching by producers, um, and I think that was intentional also just to sort of see how we navigated the, those scenarios. Um, you know, I, I learned a lot about production. I learned that, um, that I was being set up a lot for some set up by who some by producers. I was being yeah. set up Go ahead, to, 
talk about people and they would feed me information to give my opinion about that might not be true. Oh, um, wow. And, <laughs> wow. I figured, that out, I figured that out along the way um, that it was basically sort of like crumbs that they would feed you behind the scenes. And we, we were so busy that we really didn't know what was going on. Like, for instance, Michaela Salahi, she wasn't my friend. I never see her. I, I wouldn't be around her. And also when we were filming, we were so separate and busy most of the time that I had no idea what was going on in their world. Exactly. Um, I was hearing a lot of complaining on production side about them <laughs> canceling and costing them a lot of money um, because they were so flaky and inconsistent and shady um but you know what i didn't know is that there was this underlying theme that was rolling forward and being woven under my nose of my daughter being a thief oh by their occupation and i mean <laughs> it was unfounded it was bold shit. and it what you know it ended up coming out that they were completely wrong and accusing her of something that she never was involved in. Go ahead, Andrew. We can talk about this for a second. I remember watching that and you're like, Tark is basically saying the FBI's involved and you guys are sitting in a winery. <laughs> like, and you're like, that they've sold polo gear and this is grand theft, the FBI's involved. And you and your husband are like, you're clearly no. stressed out about this. Like, this is just, well, TV cameras are not. I mean, those are those are some serious accusations, and exactly. you have to take them seriously. And if they're if they're willing to put that kind of stuff out on national television, you better vet that out and make sure that there is nothing that's going on. So we did, and there was nothing going on. Ridiculous. In fact, I look back at that Andrew now at those scenes. It's hilarious to me. Yeah, <laughs> I laugh. You're I laugh so hard at that. Crazy. And, Just crazy. Fact, and it was very important for Andy Cohen to come back here because if you look at this, the, the amount of money that's in this area, even though we don't show it in this area, it's a very high concentration of wealth. I believe last time I checked, McLean is the wealthiest county in America. And like we, it's the DMV. It's like a hop, skip, and a stone and you can hit someone's house. Everybody knows everybody if you're in the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll run into each other at Tyson's Galleria. You know, it's just, it's the way yeah. it is here. So, yep. yeah. But you're right. People people like to hide their, their wealth. It's not, yeah. and that's why a reality yeah. show doesn't really work here. Because exactly. nobody's showing the business. Everyone's keeping their mouth shut. No one's, no one wants to, to share what they have. They're very tight-lipped around here and private. Exactly. But yeah. that's because of politics. Exactly. I mean, you you meet someone at an event, like I know, just if you go to a political event here, they'll say they were a campaign manager for. Uh oh. He went out. You're, you're, Can you hear him, Mary? I don't know what happened. I, I can't hear him. Andrew, you faded out. So sorry. We can't hear you. Let's oh, give it you. There we oh, go. So okay, sorry. You were just um, into the good stuff and we couldn't hear you. <laughs> I know, I'm so sorry. But, um, you know, everybody here in DC, we've all, they, if, you're, if you were considered for the show or anyone in the social circle of DC, you've done something incredible. You go to events, you do things, but if you mention it, it's just in passing. And everyone here, yeah. everyone who I know or who, who's gone, it's like, your kids all attend the same schools. It's Madeira, Bullis, Gonzaga, or Georgetown Prep. It's like one of those schools. Here's another question I have for you. If you answer this to the best of your ability. Okay, your show didn't work out basically for the Salahis and whatnot, but why the disrespect? Why no BravoCon? Why no mention of you guys? Why act like it never happened? Do you have any idea what happened? No. Um... Andy has, you know, made different comments here and there in passing, wrote in his book that came out um, that basically it was, he just couldn't go, he couldn't, he couldn't go forward with us. It wasn't a, it wasn't a fiduciary good decision. And so I think that 
Um, you know, I don't understand why. I, we, we were supposed to actually, this time last year, it's incredible, it's been a year. This time last year was the, the anniversary. It was the 10th anniversary of the White House crash because all of that trans transpired in this particular Thanksgiving week 10 years ago. 11 years ago now, yeah, um, you're right. it was, it was 2009 Thanksgiving week when that white house crash happened. But, um, he, he, you know, so there was all this buzz happening about our 10th anniversary coming up of our show airing. And so I contacted him and said, Andy, I think it's time in a very nice way, a gracious way. I think it's time that we get a little recognition. Why not bring us as a group on watch what happens live and let's sit down and have a conversation and let's have a little catch up and review what happened and where we are now, because I think we're due that. And so um, Kat was, uh, and the way this all got fueled also is that Kat was in the States because she lives in Spain now. Oh wow! And yeah. so she was visiting the States last year about this time. And that's when I pitched Andy and said, you know, will you have us on? And he said, I love it. I'll have you on. We just need to get Mikkel to agree to do it because we don't want to do it without her. Mikkel's and so I said, I said, you know what? I want to, I want to have her there too. Mm -hmm. I want to sit down with her. I want to hear how she is. She has a beautiful life. It seems now. She's, she's totally had, you know, she lives, she lives a rock star life, literally with yeah. Neil Schoen of Journey. Mm -hmm. And so I'm fascinated by her story and I want to hear her. She's such an opportunity to set the record straight and say, whatever was happening was messed up and she can, she can speak to her part in it or not, or, you know, she can set the record straight. So I said, Andy, I, I agree with you. I don't think, I think that's a riveting show actually mm -hmm. is to have all five of us there, but I don't think she'll do it. I really think that she's bound up and she's been advised that she should not be talking about this anymore further. So, and then they just were like, yeah, sorry, we're not going to do it without her. So whatever. And then a week prior to Memorial day of this year, mm -hmm. we got, queued up to shoot some promos because they let us know that they were going to run a marathon Friday before Memorial Day. And yeah. so that was fun. And we expected, and they had us do all kinds of things like, what are we doing now? How, do, you know, it was, we, I, we ended up spending about two days of filming on our own to submit all this content. And I thought that they would actually weave us into the Bravo channel. No, it ended up being a flat out continuous marathon, eliminating our reunions, which was very sad. Cause that's like, how do you just leave your, your people that never watched it before are going to watch it. And you're not going to air the reunion to see what happened and how we, how do you know that? Else, how do you know that someone else didn't piss off a producer and just didn't tell you? <laughs> Cause this, this sounds personal. Like they didn't bring you back for anything. It's kind of crazy. No, it has to do with Andy. It's all in Andy's court. It is. And he, yeah, he has the power to, to bring us there or not. And he's, you know, and, and he lets us know that he loves us independently. And I know he does, but he's not, he's not willing to bring us back as a group, whether it's three or four of us or five of us, mm -hmm. it should be a couple of us that are willing to talk and want to talk and people want to hear about it. People are dying to get us on his show. Yeah, to look hear at about what He loves you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are dying, <laughs> dying to hear about it. And I know. I know that it would be great. It would gr be greatly received. And there's, if you think about it, 10 years ago, there are fans of Bravo, of the Real Housewives franchise, that never even knew that there was a DC show. Yeah, exactly. Yep. That came up. Yep. That came up with this. This second round of, of airing a marathon, I can't tell you how many people started following me that didn't even know that I was on that show or knew that, that Bravo had a DC show. So because there's such an opportunity 
to create a whole new band of followers and interest in something that really was epic. It was iconic, it's iconic television. And to go back and you can see like the temperature, the political climate is very well depicted there. The issues that were on the table are very well depicted there. We were, we were talking about gay marriage and we were talking about, um, you know, all kinds of things that, that were pertinent to the time. Obama administration just taking office. It was yeah. fascinating. And there was an energy with our, with our show that, that is very different from the other franchises. That's authentic. It's very authentic. Go ahead, it's Andrew. So funny. It's so funny that you say the other shows because we think about it and you guys, we, the 2010 year, that marks in the 2009s, that's when Bravo premiered a whole new shows because we had Beverly Hills, DC, and New Jersey. And if you think yeah. about it, New Jersey had their season, which was the first season of Jersey. And I know Linda has spoken about this and she was like, I don't want anything like Jersey. And yeah, we look at that. And then you also see just how different each three of the season series were and how they were and how they fit all three of them. Yeah. Nothing was like a carbon copy and that's how you see them fit. But now there's a gap between in the housewives yeah. franchise because you guys are gone now. Yeah. With that being said, how come you never tried to get your own show? Well, I have, I, I ended up getting divorced pretty soon after the show ended. And that wasn't the cause of my divorce. My, 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 my marriage was in bad shape for years prior, um, which is always a question I hear. Do you think that being on the show caused your divorce? No, it was, it was, it was done before. Um, it just gave me the opportunity to be able to manage myself and, and handle my financial matters to get out of it. But um, no, I've been working on things. I've been working on film production. I'm an actress. I'm going to be cast in a couple of films coming up and I've just launched a lifestyle brand and that's yes. going to be where I'm going to have my big launch. So I think, I think what I've figured out in looking back on the last 10 years and the track that I've been on, I believe that I've needed a lot of, of, um, evolution within myself before I'm ready to put myself back out there with a very confident voice of experience and understanding of what I want to say. And, um, you know, I was, I was looking at writing a book because I have a, I have really incredibly interesting story. Mm -hmm. I had a baby with my mother, same parents and a baby with my mother. I'm the oldest of seven. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So I was 19. My mom was 44. She had her seventh child seven weeks after I had my first. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we lived, <laughs> lived down, we lived down the street from one another. Mm, yeah. um, my grandfather was a very famous man that was one of the pioneers of radio and television. And there's incredible stories there. Yeah. My dad was one of the pioneers of, of uh, cable television and has incredible stories about politics and also the foundation of the cable business mm. with Ted Turner and all those guys. Mm. Um, and just having five kids as a 19 year old, kind of going from my father's house into my own house and, and playing house exactly. and all that transpired and, then I put myself, myself and my family on reality television as I'm, you know, trying to figure out how I'm going to transition out of my marriage. And I then was like, okay, because I had a ton of offers. I had a ton of people coming at me with all kinds of interesting things that, that I could have launched into. But I just chose to um, get quiet. Because I, and I knew, I knew that there was a risk in like losing relevance and all of that and momentum in, in the public eye. But what I realized is that I needed to be coming in a place of authenticity and not just hurtling over things because they were given to me. I did not want to be making things up that were not true to me and, and resonant with me. So when, when I started this journey, 10 years ago where people were like, you should write your story. And I started to sort of explore that. And I started writing it with 
someone, uh, you know, that was helping me. Mm-hmm. And I, all of a sudden I had this epiphany. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like in the middle of the best part of this story right now. Mm-hmm. I can't write this now. I have to wait and like get to myself to a new place and then share all of this experience that has been so transformational and profound and interesting that I'm now ready. So yeah. I'm, I'm launching stuff now. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sorry if I, did I interrupt Andrew? Uh, there's just one thing I want to add to, I just, if we can talk about this for a second, this is back on a housewives track. If you guys don't, yeah. if you guys forget Mary's tagline is, it was not her tagline, it was chopped together. And it was, if you don't mind me saying it, I think I, I think I yeah. have to say it. I don't make money, I spend money, which is, it's not an nope. accurate representation of you. I'll give it, to, I'll give that. Yeah, it's no. not an accurate representation of you. No, I, I, I think they stretched with that one. They didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna ask you this question. I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. But if you take yeah. any franchise, it seems like in each franchise, they have one woman that gets really close to Andy Cohen, like your Teresa Judice, your NeNe Leakes, your Kyle Richards. You guys didn't have, you guys were more of a group. Do you regret not getting close to him <laughs> and just kissing up um, to him? No, no, not at all, actually. Um, I would say the closest person in our cast to him is Linda. Because Linda, Linda, Linda loves people. I love people. I, but Linda knows how to deal with people because she, she's, she's doing it every day and she's so diplomatic about it. And she's so genuine. Um, and did she ever she kick totally and scream? Did she ever kick and scream to get what she wants? Do you know what I'm talking? Do you see that person every she franchise? Yeah. Yeah. She knows how to do that, but I think in our case, we had very little power, mm. so it didn't really make sense. In fact, she didn't want to become that squeaky wheel, or I didn't either, that squeaky wheel where uh, they want nothing to do with us. Yeah, gotcha. You know, that we're going to be, that we're gonna be completely tossed aside. Yeah. You know, and, and we're just authentically gracious people. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it's like, if you don't, if you don't want us, fine. But why not, you know, leave us with some honor and some respect that will actually enhance your brand. Yeah. If you treat it right, you know, I think they did some, some disservice to themselves Mm -hmm. because it doesn't look good. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look just to me the way we were treated. Were any of you guys true friends off camera? Yes. Linda is one of my best friends. Has been for a long time. Our kids are all very dear friends. We celebrate holidays together. Yeah, she's she's one of my dearest friends. And that experience only enhanced our friendship. Yeah. It bonded us. I mean, you know, they talk about trauma bonding. Yeah. <laughs> How, you know, oh if you're in a situation with someone, something happens, you're with that person forever in some way, you know? Yeah. And so yeah. we we had not that it was trauma, but it was it was an experience that, you know, no one can ever make up or take away I mean, we, the stories we have are just mostly hilarious like yeah between cat linda and myself our experience the the further this went on and the more the more silly it became because of <laughs> the focus on the salahis and all of this nonsense that was going on we just started laughing we started mm-hmm. laughing because it was laughable we're like these people are trumping the whole show. They are, they are hijacking the entire focus of this show. Mm-hmm. And here we are just like pawns, just having to go along and, and follow along the storyline that is so ridiculous. And you know, one of my biggest disappointments is that through the editing process, my entire charitable work was cut out. And that's why I did this show. Sounds familiar. I wanted to. Yeah. I wanted to feature my charity, and you know, Andy had me on his show with Jeff Lewis, which was a memorable moment. That was so much fun. I think he started to try to redeem himself a little bit um, by just sort of giving us little little opportunities here and there. But um, 
you know, he, he gave me an opportunity on his show to talk about my charity, apologize that it was cut out. Uh-huh. Um, but it was because of the whole Salahi thing became the finale of our show. And it was supposed to be my charitable fashion show, raising money for Children's Hospital, exactly. which was incredible. It had Lila Rose, had all this. It was amazing. But yeah, you again, were cheated. you know, when exactly. I, look, you were cheated. I look, at, I look at those clips like of our press tour and we went on the Today Show on the day we premiered. Oh, we yeah. sat down with Hoda and Kathy Lee. And this was after we were on the plaza with like the whole crew and, you know, the, all the whole morning Today Show crew. And then we went upstairs with Hoda and Kathy Lee and we sat there. We, and this was the beginning of our press tour where we had yeah. to be exposed to working with Mikkel again. And this had all happened. And we had protested and said, we will not be around her. We have to have security. We don't trust Tark. He's violent. You know, L- Linda went real strong on that one. Mm-hmm. But we sat there um, on the sofa with Hoda and Kathy Lee. And I said, I, you know, you can see me on the end of the sofa with t- like tapping my heel, getting really annoyed. And Hoda then turns to me and is like, looks like you have something to say. And I'm like, I'm so tired of this. I'm so sick of this being all about them. You know, five of us were here, not just one couple, five of us. And my entire intention was completely cut out and on the floor because of that woman. And I'm not, I'm not okay with that. I said, we have all kinds of things that we wanted to showcase all kinds of things that were very positive and cool. And, and Hoda's like, <laughs> well, no one's there to watch charity events, by the way. You oh, know, wow. Like, <laughs> you know, wow. kind of a little slam from her. Like, exactly. we're not, or no, it was Kathy Lee, I think, said it. Yeah. She basically was like, we're not watching it to watch you guys, like, watch a fashion show. Mm-hmm. We want to see some good stuff, mm-hmm. you know? And I was like, do that, fair enough. But, you know, we, we got slammed pushed aside exactly it's okay i'm not bitter i I believe that things happen for a reason and i knew in my heart that that thing was not um gonna go on for much longer if it had gone on for another season i would have been okay but i also knew that if i was coming out as like the the nice one family woman that has a positive message Mm -hmm. that was going to turn somehow and they were going to try to trash me in further seasons. So it gets rude. I was saved. Yeah. And we also look at your, and we look at your press tour and the fact that housewives franchises, I know, you know, because of what's going on in the world, it kind of, it's causing them to stop now because Salt Lake city that just came on. And that is, could be facing a very similar fate to what your guys, what your franchise had, which yep. I know crazy enough as that sounds, yeah. they are, it could actually end in a very similar way. Yeah. Um, Potomac never really had, never really had a press tour like yours. I can't think of another franchise that's had a press tour like yours. Like yours is, they just don't do it anymore. They you know? Splash. They splashed <laughs> us. They splashed us all around. I mean, that whole thing with The View, but I think they also had an opportunity to put us on other shows to create drama around this, the, the, whole, the whole reason we were, you know, up in arms with the Salahis. It was just to, just to showcase and probably put us all in one space to talk about the season and how it was so ridiculous and how, you know, you're, you got to watch this because this lady did that you know yeah and <laughs> it's just so crazy to look at like and i just and as we look back at this because i think if you have not watched dc you should and i we look back at this and especially someone i mean i'm from dc area and i was just speaking to my neighbor about this i mean and when she was talking and we were like she said i hate the real housewives franchise and i was like how can you say that she was like well potomac people get violent and DC, you've got wedding crashers who end up getting mocked <laughs> on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and we look Cheryl, at this. what do you want to say? Do you have a question? Yeah. So what are you doing these days? Because how long has it been? 10 years. 11 since we filmed. 
Wow. A lot's happened. What do we do? I have five kids. Yeah, five? Yeah, five kids. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Congratulations. Yeah, five. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And they're all, they're all adults now. And um, they're all doing wonderful things. And I'm divorced. And I lived in Dallas for two and a half years. I'm going, still going back and forth between Dallas. But I have just um, signed on to some projects here. I'm a designer. I'm an interior designer. Mm-hmm. And I've signed on to some projects that are, that are quite significant um, uh, in the commercial space. I'm, I'm redoing a hotel that's a very historic oh. hotel. I'm part of a team. School. And um, and very excited about that. And I, I I'm probably going to be able to say what it is soon. It's, I can't say what it is right now. But um, I also um, just launched a lifestyle brand slash blog. I'm starting out with a blog just to just to sort of establish the message. And um, as you can see by what I'm wearing, I'm kind of like this hippie chick. And so all of that, all of that uh, Real Housewives polished hair and makeup you saw on me was, uh, ooh, not me at all. And, really? Um, wow. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, and I love hair and makeup, but I like it. I, I like it a little bit more natural and I just like a little bit more relaxed lifestyle um, and so what I've done is I've created this brand and this came to me, I've had this inside of me for probably 15, 20 years, this idea. Um, and it's basically creating a lifestyle brand that is, that is very down to earth, approachable and has, um, it, it resonates with a very natural, holistic way of living, but mm-hmm. also hippie chic, cool. We take care of our bodies. We look beautiful. We have work done if we need it. We have a very natural holistic approach to maintaining ourselves as we, as we live. And it's not necessarily just for women. It's like just, Shannon it's Bedore. A, a is it like, do you know who Shannon Bedore is? No. Oh. Did you get a chance? You were on such a short time to make any friends with the women in different franchises. I did. Yeah. I know a bunch of them from a bunch of different franchises. I know, um, well, I know a couple of the Potomac gals just because we're here and, and we know each other. I know Robin the best, I'd say. Oh, wow. Charisse, really? Oh, I'm an wow. old friend of. And, um, yeah. Um, and then I know Sonia from New York. I know Alex McCord very well. She and I no. became very good friends. Do you really? Yes. Yeah. No, yes. that's so cool. Alex she lives in Australia, Ford. right? Yeah, she does. does. Yeah. And she has like her PhD and like she's she's a smarty. Wow. She's a real smart one, that one. Wow. Um, and then I know Kyle. I know who else do I know? Um I've met Luann. Um uh Alex, Alex Quinones from Miami. Oh, yeah. is that right? I remember. Right. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, it, it's just a shame yeah, that you guys, you guys deserve the same respect that the other franchises get. Even like Miami, they refer to more than they do. Anna. Sorry, Anna. I want to correct myself. Anna. Anna. Yeah. Anna, the, the skinny Latina. <laughs> that girl. She's, yeah. a, she's amazing. She she's did a pretty. huge charity thing. She d- she's beautiful and very down to earth and sweet. She did a, an amazing charity move right around when our show, our marathon just aired in May, mm-hmm. where she, she collected through the whole entire franchise of, ha- of Real Housewives dresses from all of us right. to auction mm-hmm. off, to raise money for first responders for oh. COVID. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. She, she, she did, sorry, there's like three guys in here, but, um, yeah, she just did this amazing project and we bonded through that. So Anna, I love Anna. I mean, anyway. you could never say never, but Andy might give you guys a second look. What do you think, uh, Andrew? Just, you know, if people start you. talking about it like we are and stuff like that Thank and letting them know you guys had a, fa- you did not uh, leave television because of your ratings. It was just a scandal. I think you guys should come back. 
I mean, but I'm not a producer. <laughs> You're calling it here. Sure, our ratings a- actually were the highest of a freshman season of Housewives. Really? Yeah. So it had yeah. nothing to do with ratings, nothing to do with ratings. It had to okay. do with internal decisions that, that clearly were thought, thought out and, uh, you know, I have, yeah. I really have no bitterness or regret. I just am disappointed with how we were handled in the aftermath and, and not really respected and, and left in a place that I think sort of helped us stay a part of this because mm-hmm. it's something we, we dedicated our lives to for, for nine months, you know, it was, yeah. it was a big deal. We made a lot of sacrifices and we, and we trusted the process and we trusted Andy and, and, you know, I think, you know, he knows how we feel. He knows that we're annoyed. So yeah. I don't know. I think maybe going forward and, you know, things are changing in the world. So who knows yeah. what's going to happen to BravoCon. And, yeah. you know, this, I think that airing our show for another marathon was a really um, defining thing for the network because I think they saw that people are very interested yeah. and they, they had a whole crop of new people that, ha- that were children when we aired our show that are now fans of the franchise that never even knew that we existed. And it's like this iconic, now we're like vintage. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. So, you know, in yeah. my brand, it's all about some cool vintage too. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking on that, you guys aren't on Hulu, which that no. speaks a lot. Yeah, you guys aren't on Hulu. <laughs> yeah. No, and we were never released in a DVD because back then exactly. that was the thing is that the DVDs, not that we would have benefited at all from that, but it would have been better for building awareness and building, you know, brand awareness for ourselves and just followers. I know. I have, So if you remember, the only way you can actually still get the season is on Amazon Prime. And that's how I did it. And at some point, they took off the reunion. You can't purchase the reunion unless you already previously really? purchased it at some point. I yeah, there was a time, that. there was a three month period where they took off the reunion and then they had to add it back in because people were like, we paid for it, where to go? I wow. was just wondering, do you know anything about this? It looks like behind the scenes, Andy Cohen is not the only producer, but it seems like he's the one that makes all the final calls. Would that be a fi- fair statement? Yes. For sure. Yeah. He is. He is the boss of the, the Real Housewives franchise. What he says goes, and he can hide behind everybody else, but he is the boss of that. That is his baby. Mm. And apparently, he's coming out with a, a whole new series and book. Yeah. And I know that there's a book. I had a four hour interview with a guy who's writing a book that. Four, is did be you say four hours? <laughs> four hour interview. Oh, God. Four hour phone call interview. And it was basically an interview to just get my story. And he's an author that's working for Andy. Andy is publishing his book. And so my biggest concern was, okay, well, if Andy's publishing this book, is it going to be the truth? Because my truth is not always favorable towards Bravo. Mm-hmm. And so is he going to let that story be told or is he going to filter it? Like things were filtered back then. Like my blog post mm-hmm. was edited when I would submit it's my blog edited post. by who Bravo. Oh, Oh my gosh. I never knew that. Sorry. Post, we would, so we would have the way it worked. Our, our schedule was on Tuesdays, we would be hand delivered with a watermarked, CD, the pop in our DVD players, and it would be the uncut draft of the show that would be airing on Thursday night at nine o'clock. Mm, wow. And between Tuesday midday, which is basically when it would show up, between Tuesday midday and Wednesday close of business, I would have to watch this and write a blog entry that would then be posted on the Bravo website that would be live as the show was airing and it i remember be- that they cut that out by the way but they used to do that yeah, yeah. Oh, they don't do that anymore no. i don't know that i didn't know that but yeah that was that was the thing is that 
people would people would want to see what we had to say yeah. about what we were watching as it was happening exactly. and they were editing it. Yeah. We could not say one thing that was anywhere near the truth about, you know, certain things. But Ooh, that's that's, a, oh, that's powerful. That's, Go ahead. Andrew. That's the nature of that beast. Ooh, that is the nature powerful. of that beast and it is a beast. So, and and you know, I have the ability to share now. I am not bound by any contracts. I have nothing holding me back from saying what I experienced. And most of it is quite positive, actually, mm -hmm. what I have to share about my experience with Bravo and, and reality television. But there are things that, that people should understand that are completely out of our control. And there were things that I said in, in those in those scenes that were taken completely out of context and used for another conversation. That's really like weird my, because you hear a lot my of- whole tagline, My whole tagline was not words I put together in one sentence. Yeah. What? That's the craziest part. Her tagline, really? that's what I was trying to get at earlier. It was like chopped up. It was they chopped it up and they sewed it together because so when no, you and if you, it, I guess. you listen to it, you'll be able to hear that it's like you, it's faster and like some words or it's not a flowing sentence. I didn't say that all together. They, they chopped that up. When you see a, a housewife with a bad reputation say it's editing, she could be telling the truth. Yes. I mean, I think my opinion of the franchise as as it goes forward these women start to play into the opportunity mm -hmm. and they start to play into the drama. So yeah. I don't know how scripted it is, but I also know that they know that they're, they're, they're not relative unless they're bringing it. And so I think they turn it on and they, they might have conversations behind the scenes with producers. They might have conversations with one another other behind the scenes to like talk about what they're going to do to bring it and then walk off and be like let's go get a drink you yeah know? yeah and if you say the real uh, housewives of Beverly knows? Hills yeah. yeah yeah but I mean those women are also perfect professional actresses a lot of them exactly. they're, they're all in entertainment so there's there's that yeah and that's you know and they're not they're not signing up to just be followed around with a camera in their kitchen yeah they're, they're being asked for a reason and they know what that reason is and they know that it's going to be lucrative for them if they if they play it right but exactly. the problem is they have no control over their image and likeness i i never thought dangerous. about that till you just brought it to my attention um all of the new people that they bring on is in some kind of form of entertainment already right andrew so they yeah. like lisa renna she's an actress so exactly. she knows what to Wendy Osefa. Wendy Osefa. That girl is a professional. News. Right. That's yeah. right. She's a professional. Yeah. yeah. Who's the new one, Andrew? There's a new one that's an actress. Oh, yeah. There's Wendy, uh, Denise Richards, Garcelle. I mean, Wendy yeah. Osefa, she's on Fox News. Like, yeah. yeah. I, that well, was I thought there was a new one, even, oh. even newer than Garcelle, that's, that agreed to do it. Who? I forget. Kathy Someone Hilton? that's, that's like famous. Yeah. Quick, look it up. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's someone that agreed to do it um, that, is, that is very famous. I, I don't remember who it is. Is it Kathy Hilton? Kathy Hilton has been on television before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and she, she's, she's got entertainment in her blood, too. Like, she's, yeah. Yeah. No, there's someone. What about there's, you? There's another actor going on. What about me? Yeah. I'm going to be in some films. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I have some okay. films that I'm that I'm working on. I'm I'm uh, on the production side. I'm a producer, and I'm also an actress in them. And there's going to be some um, very well-known actors in these films too. Well, I am not going to be the main person, but I will be in these films as a sub character. Yeah. Well, you know what very that excited. means? It, uh, Bravo loves. A uh, pub, so they might call you back <laughs> if you blow yeah. up. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. You never know. I. I mean, I. I am so excited because 
um, I feel like this whole, this whole COVID thing has redefined so much in our world mm -hmm. and it's kind of like resetting so much. And, and I just think that it's giving people a new um, motivation to follow their dreams and really be doing what they want to do yeah. and focus on what's true. Um, I really do. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a horrible thing that's happening, but I think it's also, I think there's some silver lining in a lot of it. And I think it's, it's really bringing families together if they can figure their stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just think it's pushing us in a direction that we can use as a culture to get together, to, to be focused, to be intentional, and that's, that's a lot of my message in my, in my new brand is authenticity and what's true and what's not and who needs what's not. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's and let's just, let's just, let's just, let's just focus on the goodness and there's, and there's so much good that's going on in the world, no matter what the chaos is, because there's a lot of chaos right now. Um, I just think that, that, um, times like these can bring people together and can be the great leveler yeah, in life exactly. and in, 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 in a historic moment too. It can be like the great leveler where everyone thought everyone's, you know, that our, that our world is ending, but actually it's changing in a direction that is going to be very positive and we've needed a rattle. Mm -hmm. A cage yeah. needed to be rattled. And it's getting rattled in major ways. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. were you going to say, Andrew? I cut you off. Go ahead. Well, one thing I just want to say is if you guys, the biggest crime of the tw of this decade is the fact that Mary is not verified on Instagram. <laughs> that is the biggest <laughs> crime. So if you guys would like to go follow her, I only her, have like 3,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> and I'm one of them. I am a proud follower of you on Instagram. Yeah. Thanks, so. Andrew. <laughs> Yes. So please. And also we have to, if you look at it now, if in reality television, if you were to go back onto Bravo, let's say, and you wanted to promote your business, they're going to slice a yes. little bit off the top of that now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I am totally fine with that. Cause a little bit of a lot is a, is a little bit of a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather have a little bit of that than a little bit of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, but yeah, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm so, um, I'm so blessed. I have, I have such an incredible blessed life with a family that is amazing and, you know, struggles, you know, the thing is, is that I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you have, where you come from up and down. If you can handle adversity and struggle and rise above, you are succeeding. Yeah, that's It true. doesn't matter where you are in life, whether you're a homeless person off the street trying to figure out how to get help or whatever it is, like you can succeed by truly making an effort to change your situation. You can. I've done those it. Words, those words are so powerful. I mean, I don't know. A lot of people know you from being a housewife and that's if people and, but also people forget, and this is part of the Bravo's fault. You are an amazing philanthropist. Mm -hmm. I, we need to put that out there. Mm -hmm. Mary, Thank I you. mean, it's that's my heart. the work she's done. It's inspiring and it's inspiring heart. the next generation. It, it's very exactly what DC is all about. I mean, you, and yeah. I find people from the DC area, you're giving to charity because you want to. And you will, like in the DC area, you will find a charity that truly fits your heart, whether that's at the Hillwood yeah. Museum Benefit or uh, the Lupus Foundation or Veterans. Oh, wow. There's so many, there's so yeah. many amazing charities based in DC right. and you have found yours. And if you want to tell us a little bit about some, anything about them, I would be happy to hear. Yes. Well, everything that I do in this life, um, and I get this from my father. My father was an amazing, he is, he's still, he's still working full time. So I'm not saying was, but he is an amazing philanthropist and he has instilled in me 
um, the value of giving back and how important it is for us to integrate that into our everyday lives. And it can be like the smallest thing, just to have an awareness of, of kindness and giving and, and taking care of your neighbor who's in need or not, or, you know, just whatever it is. But um, yeah, I come from a legacy of philanthropist and, and, and it's, it's, it's amazing how it's, it's been instilled in me. Like it's not, a, it's nothing that I've made up. It is truly my heart. And when I'm not in a place where I am, I am focused on whatever it is that is coming to me because I'm putting it out and I'm working or creating or doing something. If I'm not focused on a portion of that going back out to someone else, then I'm not happy. I, I don't feel good. It makes me sad. And so I have to always be figuring out ways that I can just push it back out because whatever comes to me isn't mine. It's not mine. It's mine to process and push back out and, and help others that, that need it. And, and hopefully those people will get that same message that they can do that eventually. So and so, uh, good. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a passionate philanthropist, and um, and so whatever I'm doing, this hippie chica brand that I have that I've started, is is all about taking care of people, and um, and also in influencing people in a way that will help them relax and understand that life can be easy. And it can be so enjoyable, no matter where you are, what you have, you can really figure out how to have an enjoyable life by just having a few tools. Absolutely. And, so and then you can, you can figure out how to really look good too and feel good. Mm -hmm. But it's a whole like encompassing health, wellness, mind, body, spirit approach to um, life. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I can't tell you how it's, it's been a long time since I've felt this excited about something. So proud. Like, really excited. About Andrew, you and take knowing that it's question. Go ahead. No, yeah. think this is going to be, if you watch the show, you will know that Mary's closet had to be cup. She had to enter it with a thumbprint. Did the clothing, did the lolly, <laughs> did lolly and the clothing and the clothes fever and the clothes and the clothing thievery ever die down or has it rampaged Ow. or like, Oh, <laughs> Because you know, it's, it's a consistent problem. <laughs> uh, and I, by the way, Andrew, Lolly's not the only culprit. I have three daughters. So oh, all no. three it's of now it's three times as worse. <laughs> I know. It was all, all three of them, but Lolly was getting tagged with it because there was this underlying thievery line that was happening in our, in our storyline show. Oh my so God. they tagged Lolly because Lolly was you know, over 18 and they could mess around with her, with her, you know, her behavior and uh, no, all three of them do it. And so that I, I, Cheryl, I don't know if you remember this or watched it, but I had a, a biometric lock on my closet and my finger. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> and that was 10 years ago. Wow. You know what? The only way I can solve this problem is taking control of this problem. And I'm just going to lock <laughs> my door and not even the maid can get in there. Nope. Nobody <laughs> Funny. except me, which means I can go in there and close myself off to the world too, which I did a lot. <laughs> wow. Yeah. They're good. Lolly is 34 years old now. Wow. Well, that doesn't make you feel old. Man. That doesn't make me feel old. <laughs> and actually, and actually I've, I, we're not the same size, but um, yeah, I've dipped into her closet too. <laughs> That's it. That is well-deserved, well-deserved. <laughs> Karma's a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so I know Andrew was so excited to get you on the floor. Did you get it all out, Andrew? You were so excited. Mary, you, and I'm going to be honest, you, you, Mary, I mean, you, Linda, and Kat, and Stacy. You guys were the show to me. I do not care about the one who's now married to a journey guitar player. You and Linda, I love how you guys were actually all three of us are Virgos. I just, uh. oh, yay. Yes. Yeah. Linda and I are Virgo twins. 
I, yes, we, we, we have that bond, yeah. I have a question before we go. Do you watch any of the other franchises you, at all? Because you said barely. What about- I do, I watch Dallas, I watch Dallas um, because you know, I lived there for a while and I, 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 um, I'm going to be watching it pretty intently now because one of my dear, dear friends signed mm -hmm. on. Um, Jennifer this Davis is a very good friend of mine and she signed on with the Dallas franchise and um, they, that's not aired yet. So I will be watching that one. But I also, you know, catch episodes of New York and Beverly Hills. Well, maybe we can ask you to come back when we do a review of the show and you can get a, an yeah. honest opinion. Wouldn't that be great, Andrew? I, so, <laughs> Andrew. Yeah, I, love, I have I a lot to say because I can tell when it's, when it's getting all twisted up by production. I can tell. You have to come back then because these shows get so crazy and it would just be great to hear your opinion as a housewife, as an alum. So um, yeah. promise yeah. you'll come back because that would be amazing. Is comic still on? Yeah. They just yes. shot their reunion. Yeah. Did they shoot yeah. their reunion? Yeah. I think they yeah, have four just, episodes yeah, just, left. Yeah. yeah, this reunion yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Right, and I, I, I actually did catch uh, Andy's Instagram post saying it was epic and crazy. They're in, they're, oh, yeah. They're Maybe we'll, that's when we'll bring you back to do the reunions, because those okay. get crazy. All right, I'll, I'll do that. I'll catch up. I'll yeah. catch up on that season. Because Robin is a very good friend of mine. I've known her You for have years. to come back. You have to come back then. Yeah. Does, oh. Like, we would just and, love to hear what you think. I would and love you, to see. I would love to sit with you and, and uh, hash and rehash that. Yeah. That would be fun. Okay. I love that. Right. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank this was a so great interview. This in so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. Oh. Yeah. You. He's, he loves this. This was all his idea. So hippie, he's... Chica. Hippie, Chica. hippie Chica official is my Instagram for my new brand. Hippie and then, Chica? of course, Mary Ammon. But yeah, yeah, Andrew, if you can get me verified, I'll have a bonus prize for you. <laughs> He can no. do it. Of all people, because, Andrew can do it. You know, when I when I was on TV ten years ago, Instagram didn't exist, so our Twitter exactly. was all we had. That was the oh. only social media we had. Yeah, really. So I have like twenty thousand. I have like twenty thousand people on Twitter, but I don't really get on Twitter. And I have like probably ten thousand on Facebook, but I mean, Instagram is what I use, and I only have Instagram. like under four thousand people following me. But I mean, I would love it if you could help me. Yeah, boost my and those social. numbers will shoot one one time on our show, and it's a great awesome. Episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Thank you so I, much, Mary. I, I appreciate it. Go ahead, Andrew. Show. Thank you. Thank you so much. I loved you, and I loved your seeing your family. Thank you so much for this. Oh, yeah. Again, great experience, <laughs> and I will be I will Thank be the you, first Cheryl. to read that blog. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is such a treat for me because you know I'm kind of old news, so. Being able to talk about things from 10 years ago and share what I'm doing now. And I'm so excited. I, I, like I said, I've not been this excited about anything in a long time. So I think you're going to be um, pleasantly surprised about what's coming forward and some really amazing films that are going to be made mm -hmm. and, um, and a TV show. Yeah. That sounds great. Thank you so That's much, Mary. Book. We appreciate it. Say bye. Andrew, Andrew loves you. Say bye, Andrew. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Have a great day. Great night. Bye, Andrew. Bye. Well, when you're in DC, coffee, we'll get together. We'll have a coffee. Yeah. Yes, yes, we will. Oh, my goodness. Yes, we Take will. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. That was good. Bye-bye.